When my oldest son was about five, he asked me one of those important, life-changing, benchmark questions. No, it wasn't the where do babies come from question. I was actually ready for that. I had like diagrams and everything. What he asked me was, Dad, where do thoughts come from? Really? Really, kid? Is that what you want to know? So I don't know. I, I just spit out something like, thoughts come from your head, son. And that kind of shut him up for a while. And now, about 10 years later, I guess he's finally ready to hear where thoughts really come from. So, here it goes. Now, I wasn't actually lying to my son. I mean, thoughts do come from our head. In particular, they come from our brain. To be even more specific, they come from these small cells in our brain called neurons. We have about 100 billion neurons in our head. And all these neurons have basically one single job and that is to communicate with each other. It is vital to understand that every thought, every feeling, every emotion, every memory you've ever felt is because these billions of neurons are communicating with each other in different ways. What's important to know about these neurons is they never ever touch each other, which was the motto of most of my girlfriends in high school. There is always a space or a gap between neurons and this gap is called the synapse. So then how do our neurons actually communicate with each other across this gap? And the answer essentially is they throw chemicals back and forth at each other. And these chemicals are called neurotransmitters. And how important are these neurotransmitters? Well, I mean, if I was pressed, I would say they're everything. Every thought, every single memory, hell, every emotion, you've ever had is because of specific chemicals or these neurotransmitters that are being shot across the synaptic gap between neurons in our brain. Okay, so how many different types of neurotransmitters do we have in our brain? Well, scientists estimate there's anywhere between 30 and 100, with about 10 of them handling 99% of the functions in our brain. But for the purposes of, I don't know, an intro psych class or AP class or an IB class, you really only have to know about, I don't know, I would say about four or five. So let's go through them quick. One important neurotransmitter is called acetylcholine. Good luck trying to spell that. So scientists just call it ACH for short. And this neurotransmitter is involved in voluntary motor movement and memory. So every time you move your body, you're actually firing acetylcholine in the synapse in between our neurons. I guess a good practical example would be something like the black widow spider. The venom from a black widow spider increases acetylcholine production in our brain to the point where we'll start seizing because we can't control all the voluntary muscle movement. Lack of acetylcholine has also been linked to diseases such as Alzheimer's. A second neurotransmitter you should probably be aware of is called dopamine. Dopamine is involved in things like motor movement and alertness. Um, drugs like cocaine increase dopamine levels in our body making us feel very, I don't know what it really feels like, I've never taken cocaine, but they say energetic because it's a stimulant. Lack of dopamine has been linked to Parkinson's disease, and actually an overabundance of dopamine has been linked to schizophrenia. Another neurotransmitter you should be aware of is serotonin. Serotonin is involved in mood control. Lack of serotonin has been linked to clinical depression. So if you're taking an antidepressant like Paxil or Prozac or Zoloft, then logically you would know that that drug probably increases serotonin levels in the synaptic gaps in our brain. One of my favorite neurotransmitters is called endorphins. Endorphins are really dealing with pain control. For those of you who spend a lot of time exercising, in particular those of you who run long distances, your body will release endorphins in response to the pain. I believe they call that runner's high. I don't really know anything about that because running just sucks. Opiate drugs like heroin tend to mimic endorphin production in our brain. I guess we can do a couple more quick. Uh, we have norepinephrine, which is involved in alertness and arousal. Uh, lack of it has been also linked to depression. We also have one called GABA. Uh, GABA really deals with sleep issues. Those six are probably going to be the only ones you'll see on an intro to psych exam. So now you have kind of a conception of what a neurotransmitter is and what they can do. We still have to address how neurotransmitters actually get around our brain. In other words, how those neurons actually toss or throw or fire 
the neurotransmitters from one neuron to the next. And the best way to do that is to go over some neural anatomy, or the structure of a neuron. Let's start with the dendrites. The dendrites are like, they're like these root-like branches or these arms that come out of the cell body of, of a neuron. And they have basically one job. They're like, I don't know, they're like dirty old men. And what do dirty old men do? Yeah, they grab onto stuff. And dendrites grab onto stuff too. But in this case, they grab onto neurotransmitters. Their main job is basically to reach out, grab onto neurotransmitters from the synapse, and send messages to the rest of the neuron. Attached to the dendrites, you have the soma, or the cell body. It's basically like the brain of a neuron. Below the cell body, you have something called the axon. The axon is a wire-like structure that sends electrical messages from one side of the neuron all the way to the other. Surrounding the axon is a layer of fat called the myelin sheath. The myelin sheath, like a rubber around a wire, helps insulate the electrical signal traveling down the axon. When the myelin sheath breaks down, you have a disorder called multiple sclerosis. At the bottom of the axon, you have the terminal buttons. I've also heard it called axon terminal or end buttons. And the function of these terminal buttons is to store neurotransmitter that could be fired across the synapse to the dendrites on the next neuron. Okay, so how does this whole thing work? When a neuron's doing nothing, it's called resting potential, and it has a slightly negative charge. When the dendrites grab onto enough neurotransmitter, the neuron then will reach what we call a threshold. It's either going to fire or it's not going to fire. That concept is called the all or none response. Kind of like putting your finger on a trigger of a gun. The gun will either do nothing or a bullet fires completely. There's no halfway or partway firing. So when the neuron decides to fire, it goes into a process called action potential. And what happens basically is a little portal opens up on the axon and in rushes in positive ions, mixed in with the negative ions inside the axon, causing an electrical charge to travel down the axon. Now, in case you want to know, these ions can be many different things, but they're usually potassium and sodium, but I don't think it's all too important to know. An electrical charge travels down the axon until it gets the axon terminal, and the axon terminal buttons then fire off neurotransmitters across the synapse to the dendrites on the next neurons that are awaiting it. When the neurons receiving the neurotransmitter across synapse had enough, they reach their threshold and perhaps go into action potential. The axon terminal on the original neuron will then go into the synapse and suck up the leftover neurotransmitter, and we call that process reuptake. I know that all sounds very complicated, so let's go through that one more time. So the dendrites grab onto these chemicals called neurotransmitters. It could be serotonin, it could be dopamine, whatever it is. When the dendrites had enough, it reaches its threshold. It then sends a message to the soma to go into action potential. When the neuron goes into action potential, it opens up a small portal on that wire called the axon. The axon lets in positive ions, causing an electrical charge to go all the way down the axon. Once the electrical charge reaches the axon terminal, that neuron then sends neurotransmitters across the synapse to the next neuron awaiting it. Whatever neurotransmitter is not being used, the axon terminal then suck it right back up in a process called reuptake. You know, I'm going to take this time to give you guys a special bonus. We're going to talk about drugs. Because drugs, for the most part, mimic or block neurotransmitters in our body. In fact, drugs do only one of three things. Some drugs are what we call agonists. Agonists are drugs that mimic neurotransmitters. So they latch onto the neuron. The neuron thinks that that drug is a neurotransmitter. Then it goes into action potential and it fires. Other drugs are called antagonists. Antagonists latch onto the neuron. The neuron knows it's not the neurotransmitter and it stops the neuron from going into action potential and firing. The third thing a drug can do is it can inhibit reuptake. In other words, when the axon terminal tries to suck up that leftover neurotransmitter, some drugs block the axon terminal so it can't suck up that leftover neurotransmitter, leaving too much in the synapse, causing us to feel the effect of that drug. An example would be cocaine. Cocaine is a dopamine reuptake inhibitor. So when a neuron's firing dopamine, the axon terminal fires it out, 
and then it tries to reuptake it or suck it back up. The cocaine blocks the axon terminal from sucking up leftover dopamine, thus we have too much dopamine in the synapse, thus we get high off cocaine. In fact, almost every single antidepressant drug is a reuptake inhibitor. Uh, they're most often called SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Drugs like Paxil, Prozac, or Zoloft, they go into our body and they stop the axon terminal from sucking up the leftover serotonin. In this case, we raise serotonin levels in our body, hopefully alleviating depression. Okay, so there you have it. Neural anatomy, neural firing, neurotransmitters, and drugs in just a few minutes. Now, obviously, I really simplified this. There are very smart people spending their whole lives studying this electrochemical process called neural firing. But since the next season of The Walking Dead comes out soon, I gotta go binge watch. I don't have a lot of time, mostly because my wife's gonna make me watch that show, This Is Us. I don't know, it, it's all right, it's, it makes me cry every time, whatever. Some of you know what I'm talking about. All right, later.